I got a job as a police officer a few months ago. For my first year or so, I'm expected to work the overnight shifts and do three 12-hour shifts a week. It's totally brutal, especially given that the worst things happen at night. It's only my third month on the job, and I already have a nightmarish story to tell. I was patrolling around my designated route, two or three in the morning, absolutely no cars to be seen on the road at all. Most of my route was dark since there was a lot of forest in our town, and then there would be one long street called Warren Street, one of the only streets lit up by streetlights around here. All the stores at this hour were closed of course, so there was very little going on at this time. I took the left turn off a quieter road onto Warren Street. I drove slow, always looking on both sides of the road to see if anything was going on in any of the parking lots. I picked up on something strange as my car zoomed past a coffee shop parking lot. I brought the car to a halt with a heavy stomp on the brakes and brought it to a reverse until I got back to the parking lot. I rolled down my window and stuck my head out to confirm my eyes weren't playing tricks on me. The lights in the coffee shop were on, which was beyond bizarre. The shop always closed at 6pm on weekdays. I knew because I was a frequent there and I knew the owner personally. I pulled up to the curb and figured I'd go check the door. Wouldn't you know it, the door was unlocked. I pushed the heavy glass door open and stepped into the shop, calling the owner's name. Something about my voice echoing into an empty coffee shop at 3 in the morning was freaky as hell. It gave me shivers just wondering why the lights were on. I kept calling the owner's name until I heard a sound come from the basement. I didn't even know there was a basement until that day. I found a door that led downstairs to a dark abyss. I unholstered the flashlight on my belt and aimed it down the stairs. I knew deep down it was my job to go down there and investigate, even though I was really afraid to. There wasn't a light switch to be found, so I made my way to the bottom of the concrete stairs, not able to see much outside of the narrow beam of light that my cheap-ass police flashlight projected. I was at the bottom of the stairs now, looking around the pitch-black basement of the shop. Then there was the sound again, only this time much louder. It sounded like some kind of half electronically produced and half organically produced sound. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's really the best way I can describe it. It came from the back room. I stepped into that back room, which appeared to be an office of sorts. I just stood there, waiting for the sound again. I might have stood there for 30 seconds, until the same exact sound erupted from a corner of the room. It was a terrible, distorted kind of sound. It apparently came from inside an air vent in the corner. First thing I did was try to shine the light into the vent, but it didn't really work. The grill blocked any amount of light that would actually light up the inside of the vent. What I did next was put my ear up to the vent to try and listen for anything that could be inside. I heard something in there. I was 80% sure what I was hearing was the sound of someone breathing. My heart started racing even faster than it was 10 seconds ago. I tried one more time to see into the vent, this time angling the flashlight a little differently and pressing one eye up to the vent grill. I guess the light beamed off the grill of the vent at just the right angle, because I saw the glow of an eye literally four inches from my face. I unholstered my gun as I shouted at the person in there to come out now, but as I tried the vent door, it seemed to be screwed on still. I could hear the person shimmying away through the vents until the sound was completely gone. Where did that vent lead to? How did they get in there? Why were they in there? What was that strange noise? So many questions that still remain unanswered. I called for backup, and we did a thorough investigation. We called the owner, who came by to help us search the place at like 4 in the morning. There were no signs of breaking and entering anywhere. Not a single unscrewed vent, not a single broken window, nothing. Our investigation didn't last more than a few hours, after which we determined whoever was in the vents was gone. The thing that scares me the most is the sounds that I heard. Not just the breathing from the vent, but that sound that was emitting from the vents. That sound that could be heard all the way from the upstairs of that shop.
I used to work at a gas station off some rural highway in Ohio. It was a 24-hour gas station. I usually worked from 8 p.m. to 4 a.m. The shift always started busy. Lots of people on road trips coming in for coffee and snacks, filling up gas obviously, and usually around 11 to 12 it would really quiet down. There would still be some people coming in, but once 1 or 2 a.m. hit, it was usually dead until the end of my shift. Usually by that time I was just playing games on my phone, doing work for my web classes, or watching movies on my laptop. The night in question I was actually catching up on a TV show I was watching at the time. The road was completely dead at this hour. You could expect to see maybe one car pass by every 5 minutes, and maybe one car came into the lot every 20 minutes to a half hour. The headlights of a car suddenly glared through the window briefly as a car turned into the gas station lot and pulled up to one of the pumps. The car turned off and so did the lights. No one stepped out though. My attention went back to my show and it did for a while. In fact, it took me a few minutes to realize that the car outside was still there, but no one ever came in to pay for gas, nor was there anyone standing outside filling up. The car was still just parked next to the pump. It was a bit sketchy, but then again, maybe they were texting or on a call or counting money. There could be a number of reasons. Finally, I heard a car door shut outside. I paused my show, expecting them to come inside, but the guy just stood by his car. It looked like he was facing down at first, but when I squinted my eyes a little, I saw he was actually looking at me. He finally came over to the door and came inside. The bell of the door rang as some guy with his hood up walked right past the counter. He gave an ever so slight side glance to me. I could see just one of his eyes for a short second before he turned away and walked to the back section of the store by the snacks. I couldn't see or hear him while he was back there. He seemed to be back there for a while. I called out, do you need help sir? Not even the slightest sound in response. Just as I was about to come out from around the counter. The man came out from the corner and slowly walked back outside, not looking at me once. He went back to the pump, opened his passenger side door, and seemed to be digging in his car for something. Then he shut the door and looked at me again. Regardless of the distance and glass between us, I knew he was looking at me. He lifted his arms and seemed to begin waving me over. I didn't know what to do but everything about the situation and this man were freaking me the hell out. He started walking very quickly over to the door, still waving his arms and hands at me. He put one hand in his pocket now, while waving with the other still. It looked like he was reaching for something. I ran around from the counter and to the door so I could lock it. I managed to with only three seconds to spare before he tried pulling it open. This was the first time I could see his face as he looked at me and I looked at him. I noticed his hand in his pocket, holding what I was sure was the handle of a blade. I shut the blinds to the windows as I told him were closed. He still stood there though. I tried to put it out of my mind, but I couldn't because he started knocking on the glass. He knocked and knocked and knocked until it turned into more of a banging. I screamed a threat to call the cops if he didn't go away. He stopped a few moments after I said that and I think he walked away. I didn't check. I simply stayed hidden in my corner behind the counter. I gave it 10 minutes before I would open the blinds back up. And when I did, I felt a certain kind of horror in my body when I saw his car was still there. Where was he? Was he in his car or somewhere outside? Paranoid thoughts came to my head, like what if he was by the back door? I felt relieved when another car pulled into the parking lot and a normal looking man came to the door. I unlocked it for him and he came in with two 20s in his hand. I told him to be careful of that other car and then we got into a long conversation about what just happened. During the conversation the other car turned on and finally drove off. The man and I both laughed about it but when the guy who worked after me finally came in at 4am I was not laughing. My whole drive home I was still shaking thinking about what happened. Nothing that strange ever happened again throughout the rest of my time at that gas station.
My second job ever was delivering Chinese food at a local corner Chinese place in 2008. It was one of my best paying jobs to date, mainly because of how fast paced the place was, and how many deliveries aka tips I would make. It was a busy Thursday night, a half hour before closing time. We had three delivery guys working, myself included. My boss was always a hard ass. As usual, he told me to make the delivery and be back quickly. The address led to a town five miles away though, so I knew this would be a longer trip. But the longer ones always had the better tips. I still remember the order. It was just an order of wonton soup and rice. It was a 15 minute drive. I pulled up to the house, and it was not exactly the most appealing area of town. I stepped out of the car with a small brown bag of food, and before I stepped up the curb from the street, I stopped and looked up at the upstairs window of the house I was delivering to. There was half of someone's face peeking at me, and by half I mean I could just see someone's eyes on the top of their nose as if they were trying to hide. I didn't know what to think. It didn't look like some kid, it looked like a grown man. All I could do was continue walking to the door. I found a note on the door saying, Doorbell broken, asleep, door unlocked, money on table, please come inside and leave food on table. The note was so bizarre I had to take a picture of it. You know how they say red flags can go off in your head in a split second? Well, that's exactly what I was feeling. I stepped back a few feet to look up at the window again. The person wasn't at the window anymore. I knew they weren't asleep, so why would they leave a note like this? I tried to rationalize. Maybe it's a really socially awkward person who prefers not to engage with a delivery person. I slowly turned the knob, and yes, the door was unlocked. There was no light at all in there. I couldn't distinguish where the table was that the money was allegedly sitting on. I tried going left, and found myself in what I assume was the kitchen because I could hear a fridge nearby. Like I said, it was dark as hell in there. I finally came up with the brilliant idea of using my phone as a light. I put the brightness up all the way, and that's when I saw the silhouette of a person in the corner of the kitchen. No features, nothing. Just the silhouette of someone. At that moment, I dropped the bag of food on the floor and walked out the front door back to my car. I never looked back at that sketchy ass house, nor did I ever go back to that sketchy ass part of town. My boss was pissed even after I explained it to him, but that's just how he is. I did another delivery that night and went home, and couldn't sleep all night thinking about what could have happened in that house had I actually gone up to that table.